guys, Zach here from Trios Guitars and Red Tree Collective. Today I'm going to talk about bracing and how to design your own bracing patterns. Bracing is arguably one of the most important factors in determining a instrument sound. And each luthier has their own take on what the right bracing is. First of all, let's look at what braces need to accomplish. First and foremost, the braces need to support the top and protect it from imploding or exploding with string tension. Second, these braces need to distribute the string energy to other parts of the top and make use of as much of the top as possible as a vibrating surface. And third, they have to support areas to prevent cracks from happening if the guitar was to take an impact. All this needs to happen with minimal weight added to the top so that the top can vibrate as efficiently as possible. Bracing is going to vary largely based on what type of forces are acting on the top of the instrument. So on a arch top or a guitar with a floating bridge and a tailpiece, your forces are acting down into the top as opposed to a pin bridge or a bridge with a tie block where the principal force is actually torquing on the top. So all the bracing needs to accommodate those forces in as efficient a way as possible. So let's look at what a standard steel string bracing is. So this is a uh, plan from a Gibson J45. I'll just go through the purpose of each brace here. You'll see this, this standard X on almost all acoustic steel string guitars built today. That's definitely the most common uh, sort of bracing style. And then there's usually variations um, in other parts of the top. So this X is pretty universal. Um, what happens down here, it tends to differ between manufacturers and makers. So this is also the standard Martin style tone bars is what they call them. And they are supporting the top from bellying up with the string tension. Now this part of the top on the upper bout or right above the bridge is is being pushed down by the strings uh, on the saddle. So different forces are acting on the top part of this guitar as on the bottom. These finger braces, from what I understand, their purpose is mainly just to support these open areas so that if the guitar gets bumped or something like that, it won't develop a crack in this big wide open area. So this a variation is you can put flatter uh, braces down here as opposed to tall finger braces. Um, there are a bunch of different variations out there. Also around the sound hole, reinforcing it in case any cracks start is fairly important. Now the bracing up here is designed to withstand the uh, downward force of the, of the fingerboard on the top. So the strings are pulling the neck up and it actually pushes the fingerboard down into the top. And you'll see on a number of old guitars that the, the fingerboard is caving into the top. That's because this isn't strong enough in this area or the neck block is, is rotating. So this brace is usually big and fat and then this is this patch is mainly to stop these areas from cracking along the side of the fingerboard because ebony and spruce or whatever your top materials is um, they expand and contract at different rates so often guitars that don't have this will develop a crack next to the fingerboard. I would say these braces are more influential in the sound of the guitar than most of the other braces. Some variations are another X or another couple of X's or straight across. All the different variations sound a little bit different mainly because they are either more flexible or, or rigid but also the orientation of these braces also affects how the top vibrates. So certain modes of vibration, there's, there's the monopole mode of vibration which is your whole top moving in and out. There's your dipole, so your cross dipole where your, your top is rotating. It's basically pivoting on the bridge like this. And then your long dipole which is this way. So 
the orientation of these braces does affect that to some extent, as well as whether the braces are scalloped or not scalloped. If you are building your first, your fifth, even your fifteenth guitar, I don't recommend trying anything uh, too out of the box. Um, this works. It's sort of a tried and true technique. You don't want your guitar to explode. <laughs> so um, being a little bit on the cautious side is a good idea until you've built a number of instruments and then you can sort of uh, push the limits a bit. So some variations that I do think are okay to try on maybe your 20th guitar is uh, variations in this area. Obviously you still have to support the area from the bridge belling up the, the backside. Um, but up here I wouldn't recommend changing too much. Um, and above this brace, I honestly don't think that's going to contribute to your sound. Um, in fact, I actually brace extra heavy on this brace so that I don't get vibrations uh, getting lost up into this top area. Also another thing to try out is uh, changing your X brace angle. So this, on this uh, Gibson J45, the angle is quite obtuse. It's not uh, a tight or acute angle. So by widening this angle, you're opening this area, you're allowing the guitar to move more in a, in a long dipole sort of mode of vibration. By tightening it, you're going to get a little bit of a more focused sound, uh, clearer, not quite as bassy, but that's something to play with is that angle and then also down here. Thanks for watching part one of the Designing Your Own Bracing series. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions or comments or would like to share what you've found works for you, drop it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Bye for now.